sure that parents have a say in their child's education. As a parent, as a grandparent, that is the most important thing. Parents know what's best for their children. They should have, an, should have influence. They should have an understanding. They should know what's going on in a child's school. And I think um, COVID showed a lot of parents what was going on. And so I think you see this, they're, they're up in arms because finally when, uh, when they were actually exposed to what their children were being taught, what they were being exposed to, they went, oh no, what is going on in our schools? And so if there's, if there's some positive things about COVID, <laughs> that was one of them that they really understood. And so I'm, I'm just flabbergasted that there's been so much discussion against the, a bill that will provide parents with information, transparency, the ability to be involved in their child's education. And I, I, so I just, maybe just to redirect a little bit, Mrs. Fox, could you tell us a little bit about some of the provisions that would allow for transparency and input by the parents into their children's education? Parents have a right to know what's in the curriculum, okay? Um, and they want to know what they're being taught. I mean, to keep my comments succinct, I'm going to tell you, reinforces that parents have the right to be heard. We think that's really important. But the key to this all, as you pointed out, is during COVID, parents found out some of the awful things that were being taught in the schools. And as you said, they said, oh, no. This is not acceptable, and we want to make sure our parents know what's being taught in the schools. We want the parents to have, have their pri privacy of their children kept. We want them to know that the children are safe, and that we want them to know where the money's coming from, how it's being spent. There are really simple concepts in here, and nowhere do we mention the banning of books. Nowhere. So we think the... They need to know what's, what the books are in the library. And I, I'm interested in the kind of language, red tape, matrix. You know, the, our colleagues on the other side of the aisle try to make things so much more complicated when it's a simple piece of legislation. So I, I was writing, and that we're involved in culture wars. There's nothing about a culture war in this. It's simple transparency and accountability. Two terms you're going to be hearing a lot about, I think, in this session of Congress. Thank you, Mrs. Fox, because I think that brought it back to what we are really, truly talking about. We're not, and, and I, I don't think it was fair to bring a book, read part of it, read part of it, and then ask you and demand some kind of, um, you know, professional opinion on what happened and, with the book. And, and there was no context for that, just right. that it... Would and, the and gentleman, so think, gentlewoman yield no, for a minute? Just, it was the whole book. You can read it if you okay. like. Okay, thank you. Um, but I think what we are forgetting is the parents, and what we are really forgetting is the children, whose parents want input. Parents are the best, first, and biggest advocates for their children. Correct. And that's where we need to lay the responsibility of their education, and their opinions matter. And... Um, I think that we have also seen in some of the examples of school boards across the country um, that they haven't allowed for the input that they should from parents. And so I would just like to advocate for all of those parents out there who want to understand what is going on in their, in their children's schools, want to have input. And I think that this legislation is, is one step in that direction. And we absolutely have to do it for those kids that, that are incredibly important to our future and um, and the parents that are raising them and need to have the input. So thank you, and with that, I yield back. Gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for questions. 